Hello and welcome. Good to be with you here. Today is Friday in November, and that means that both today and tomorrow we're playing with the belief paraliminal. Today is session A, belief session A. And if you don't have this paraliminal, I'm not going to play it for you at the end of this session, but you could also listen to any paraliminal today that will support you. Keep in mind the key ideas that we play with right here. Beliefs are magnificent tools that the human mind keeps in place in order to make sure that cause and effect stay in place. Essentially, they're designed to make sure that any judgments that we make remain. The biggest problem is that the human mind is always processing millions of bits of information. And when we're very young, we have a tendency to have less insight into what's going on with us than we do much later in life. So this idea that we could take on a judgment about the way the world works, form a belief around it, and then keep that judgment in place for the rest of our lives can create some problems for us if those judgments become self-limiting. If those beliefs that are in place prevent us from really expanding into the possibilities that our life truly holds. Now, one of the reasons why it's particularly important to think about how the human mind processes information is that there are three universal modeling principles. They are deletion, distortion, and generalization. We take in information very rapidly, but we make very quick calls on what it is that's coming to us. And in order to do that, in order to maximize the way the brain stores information, it essentially cuts off corners. It says, oh, this is just like all of those. That's a generalization. A distortion is, oh, I think this means that. Or a deletion is there's a lot of information there that we're not paying attention to. And when we're under stress, especially, we have a tendency to go into tunnel vision. We don't see a lot of the other possibilities around us. So as a result of that, through our lives, we collect a number of beliefs that limit our potential. So belief session A does something very interesting. It tracks back into the naturalistic ways in which beliefs are formed. You see, the very first experience we have that kind of sets the human neurophysiology into a certain uh, behavior pattern is called the initial sensitizing event. Later in life, it might be fairly soon, but we have a similar situation that occurs, and that's called the symptom producing event. So now what we have is a a stimulus response, stimulus response set in motion. So next time a similar situation arises, this is the way I'm going to deal with it because it helped me survive this situation. Much later, we get what's called the symptom intensifying event. So we've got the initial sensitizing event, the symptom producing event, and the symptom intensifying event. Now, if we have a dysfunctional belief, that symptom intensifying event shows up as something that really isn't supporting us and getting us where we want to go. Hopefully that makes sense. We've got these essentially three significant events that occur The mind deletes, distorts, and generalizes, sets into place a belief that may or may not be supportive of where we're trying to get to later on in our lives. 
And so what we're going to do with belief A is we're going to allow our non-conscious mind to float back in time to that very early memory, the most recent memory of the symptom intensifying event. Then when we're there, we're going to say, what if I responded differently in this situation? How might I like it to go? What would I like to have had happen here that would be more functional, more beneficial to me in my life and where I'm going in my goals? Then we're going to let the unconscious mind flow back even further in time to that symptom producing event. Same thing, we're going to say, if I could have had this situation run differently, how would I have chosen it to go? so that I could form a different set of conclusions around this event in my life. And then we'll go back to the very earliest event that your mind can bring up. And that's the symptom, or that's the initial sensitizing event. And honestly, it may be when you're quite young, just an infant, that some situation happened and now, with your adult perspective, if you could that event and say, given the circumstance that's unfolding here, if I, if I knew then what I know now, how would I choose to have responded? And what might that do for me as a result? So we've got the initial sensitizing event rewired. We've got the symptom producing event rewired we've got the symptom intensifying event rewired and we're now getting the chance to choose a different way to relate to those early events in our lives now one of the questions that often comes up with people listening to this is well, what if i don't know exactly what the situation was that put this in place don't worry about it Trust your non-conscious mind is going to bring you to that. And because you have an intention, even if you don't see the actual event or remember clearly what occurred, the fact that you have the intention that your non-conscious mind can find a more resourceful way to respond in new and creative ways to help you get where you're choosing to go to in your life, it'll take care of all the details. Having worked for many years as a clinical hypnotherapist and understanding these kinds of events that occur and, tr and working with people's non-conscious mind to have those changes occur, it's really something quite miraculous. So I trust your non-conscious mind in the same way that you can trust it to bring you to those situations and circumstances. Now, uh, in the last decade, I've spent quite a bit of time working in a field of study called eidetic psychotherapy. There is a Dr. Akhtar Asen that introduced me to his field of work. Asen has passed away, but his work remains, and I wrote about it in my third book, called Drop Into Genius. And in that book, uh, in chapter one, I talk about the idea of how a single image can actually shift our life quite profoundly. It can transform our lives. And it was through his work that I understand that every single memory that we hold is coded with a triple description, a vivid image, a vivid somatic response or feeling response to that image, and then a vivid meaning. Now, when something happens to us, especially very young, when we're very young in life, that shakes us up, we don't have a way of assigning meaning to it very well. We might see the event, we might feel the event, but we don't really know how to make sense of it. And so as a result, we end up putting meaning in the wrong position. And it is those misinterpretations and mistaken judgments that we have about the world 
that creates our meaning making of the world. And in my doctoral research in transformational change, it is a shift in our meaning making that is at the essence of all self transformation. In other words, think about it this way. When we look out at the world, we're looking through a lens of the mental model that we hold. That's all of our judgments, all of our beliefs, all of our generalizations, distortions, and deletions of the world. It creates a lens, and there's some, there's some problems with that lens, but it's the best we have. So when something happens to us, we think, oh, you know, this, this event has hold of me. But it doesn't. It's that event that I'm holding on to that's affecting the way my life goes. So when we can take that lens and look at the lens we've been looking through, we can look at our beliefs that we have been looking through. We realize, oh, these are beliefs I hold. These are the big assumptions that I hold about the world. Now I can change those. Because once you can look at what you've been seeing through, now you can begin that process of shifting the beliefs that you hold. And as a result, your responses to the world shift. So very tiny little quantum changes, tiny, tiny changes in our mental model can lead to absolutely spectacular, gigantic changes in the results that we create in our lives. So session A, which we're playing with today, paraliminal called belief, session A, deals with those past events. Tomorrow as we play with session B, we'll say how we can now install positive and self-enhancing beliefs as needed. Enjoy this day. Realize that you're now taking hold of that lens that you've been looking through. Shift your mental model and direction of the open mind, open heart, open will, and tremendous connection to the vast resources within you. Enjoy it. We'll see you again real soon. Bye for now.